Fantastic. Uh, Alpesh Patel is here, uh, Chief Executive of Profidium Partners. Good morning and happy morning. New Year. Good morning. Happy, happy, happy New, Year. New Year. Thank you. In October 2015, on the BBC website, there was an article which was entitled Fear and Loathing Fuel Jerusalem Knife Attacks. These knife attacks by young Palestinian men have become all too commonplace. But the video of Elor Azaria killing Abdul Fattah al-Sharif while al-Sharif was lying on the ground that's created this huge controversy leading to the case, now the conviction on manslaughter charges. I don't think it's a controversy at all in, in, in this regard. The Israelis have a process of rule of law, they're the only democracy in the region, and they have convicted this soldier of manslaughter. They've convicted him of committing a crime. Albeit, from the Israeli perspective, the mass public, this was a terrorist he shot, uh, uh, but their laws, and, 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 Brit and by the way, British soldiers face the same problem, uh, uh, being convicted or being, as the papers would put it in the UK, hounded after actions in Iraq and Afghanistan. I think liberal democracies, and I'll put Israel in that category, many people will disagree, and Britain and America, their laws are too liberal. If you uh, are wielding a knife near a professional soldier, do not expect that soldier to hold back albeit under current law that soldier has committed an act of crime. I think those laws should be changed. So it's not an act of crime. Expect to be in harm's way and probably be shot and killed if you're wielding a knife. And it's got nothing to do with whether you're Palestinian or whether you're Jewish or Israeli or British or Christian or whatever else. Hanging around soldiers with wielding a knife, expect you're going to get shot. And don't be surprised uh, what happens. What's surprising about this is that an Israeli court, given the animosity between the two sides, between Israel and Palestine and the Palestinians, uh, convicted him. They, they said, we're going to go after our own man, the soldier, and we're going to say that the terrorist, as they put it, freedom fighter if you wish, if you're on the other side, uh, uh, has rights. That's what they said. That's what they said, but then, of course, they're looking at the evidence of the particular case as opposed to just someone wielding a knife and being a threat. Their argument was at that particular moment when he was shot in the head, he was not a threat and at that was, particular moment. He was lying on the he ground. And he's convicted. And he's convicted. He's convicted. He'll probably be pardoned because politically it's the expedient thing to do. I think the laws should be such that actually in these circumstances should not even have been convicted. Got nothing to do with Israel, Palestine. I'm saying professional soldiers, whether they're British, American, whatever else, if you're wandering around wielding knives around them and stabbing others, then but even after... But he wasn't wandering around, he was lying on the ground, wasn't he? That's, no, no, if that's, you, the, if that's the he, key element in, you, in the law, as it, it yeah, As it stands, he was convicted on that. I think the law should be changed. So even if you're lying on the ground after the event of stabbing someone else and you're around soldiers, uh, and it's quite clear that there's soldiers around there and this is a dangerous situation, you're probably going to get shot. Uh, and you shouldn't be surprised if that happens. OK, in Arab news, uh, Gitmo detainees, some of uh, the final uh, departures from there are going to be going to Saudi Arabia. Uh, presumably that's why it's here in the Saudi paper Arab news. But Gitmo is not going to be closed in Barack Obama's time, and he wanted it to be. But Donald Trump doesn't want anybody else transferred. Well, he's only the American president. It's not like he's got any power or influence to be able to close down uh, uh, prisons such as this. Uh, and he's only had eight years to do it. And it was only the most important thing he said in his campaign he was going to do. It just shows you how weak the American president is. Uh, and so Donald Trump's decided he's not even going to The president try. or the position? Uh, uh, the presidency. Right. The, 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 uh, regardless of who's in Congress. I'll tell you what's interesting. We have we're going to move from the age of principle, which is that uh, 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 America is better than this. This goes against our democratic found founding principles of uh, liberalism, that, w that, that this is an affront to everything America stands for, to the, the Trump principle, which will be you mess with us, you're staying in, and you're staying in indefinitely, and if it's extrajudicial, so be it. It's going to be a bit like uh, what I say with the laws I I in Israel. Actually, you know what? It, the pendulum is swinging the other side uh, on this, and uh, there's, uh, there's only 59 people left. Yes. The, the complicating factor is this. Wall Street Journal, 693 have been released, according to the Wall Street Journal, so far. A third of them, according to the Wall Street Journal, have returned to terror groups. Uh, uh, I wonder if they've returned or actually some of them have decided they're going to join terror groups. But either way, the, the figures do complicate things. Uh, I think Gitmo is going to be uh, quite full after the Trump presidency.
Let's look at uh, what's going on in India. It's a story we've covered extensively uh, since the surprise announcement from Narendra Modi that he would withdraw the 500-1,000 rupee note, more than 80% of the, of the notes in circulation yeah. in India. Now it's affecting uh, economic growth. Was this a necessary ch change that was perhaps implemented wrongly and we'll sort of see India bounce back eventually or what's your take on how that was done? Uh, well I was there um, the, the evening it was announced. And I it think was we announced had about, on the TV wasn't it? Yeah it was announced on the TV. I was watching it, I couldn't quite believe it and I had about two hours to change the two 500 rupee notes that I had which, which, which were worth about £10, like £7. It was all the money I had in the world in India at that time. And uh, I tell you it came at a, a, a pretty unfortunate time because uh, I was out there with the UK's Department of International Trade on the British Prime Minister's visit over there. So we're looking to export more to India. Now it looks like this might have, might have uh, uh, hindered Indian growth and uh, 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 you know, the engine of growth for a lot of the region and the rest of the world looks to countries like India and China to keep that growth going. And, and this demonetization, removing that money out of the pockets of, of people sh is going to hit growth. Of course it is. But it'll, of course it will bounce back. I don't think it was bad implementation. Uh, uh, obviously the opposition are saying that. Uh, and I'll tell you why I don't think it's bad implementation. I was shocked that it was kept so secret. And so many banks were open 24 hours. Uh, uh, of course, there were queues. You're talking about a population of over a billion. OK, and, and, uh, uh, and it caused a lot of discomfort to people who are stocking up piles of cash. Good. Let the rich get uh, uh, feel a bit of discomfort for their black money. OK. Uh, now, in Britain, we're uh, borrowing on credit cards and taking out other loans at the fastest pace since 2005. Surprise, surprise. And yet... On the same page here of The Telegraph, it says that one of our big high street retailers is warning that it could be in trouble after having poor sales at Christmas. In the United States, Macy's about to get rid of 10,000 employees, another big yeah. high street retailer. Yeah, which begs the question, where the heck are people exactly. spending this month? That's right. Well, clearly, they're, not spending, it, they're not spending in it in shops. next door Macy's. I think you're absolutely they're right. they're spending right. it at H&M and Zara and they're other spending places. It, uh, there are other online. retailers available. There are other retailers, and that's why <laughs> they're spending it, or online. Or online. Yeah, online retailers. Uh, uh, I mean, they are spending but they're just spend elsewhere. And as you rightly say, it's worrying because a, a, a slight blip up in interest rates and the Americans have already started raising rates and that's going to catch a lot of people uh, off guard uh, and that's why that story is concerning. But what about this issue of us being brilliant at borrowing? We are fantastic in the UK at borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. We're very good at rolling over those cards onto more interest-free ones and rolling it over and rolling it over. Uh, 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 of course, it's not ideal at all uh, uh, to have this level of debt. Uh, uh, and at the moment, hopefully what's going to happen is sooner or later, for God's sake, they'll start raising salaries. That's the problem. The reason people, I think, are borrowing so much is cost of living continues to rise. Not just a British problem, European global problem. And salaries aren't matching it, so people are making do with credit cards. If they raise salaries and pay a fairer wage, uh, keeping up with inflation, maybe we won't need to be so much in debt. Alpesh, we have run out of time, so we won't be able to talk about dementia. I think we can probably just leave quickly. Have we got any pictures of Robert Marchand, the cyclist, 105 years old? Don't show my wife the cyclist. She's going to tell me to get on the bike. We do quickly. Uh, I just wanted to say that this guy, he managed 22.5 kilometres in one hour. The doctors say he has a very special heart. His <laughs> physiology makes him... Yeah, so what's your excuse, then? Yeah, well, yeah, I can't. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>